Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is G. Cole, and welcome to Homegrown, where I get to share with you some good music while talking to some great people. Hello world, hope you're feeling as good as I am. I want to big up all my homegrown listeners out there and welcome all the new listeners. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so we can keep you updated when new material is available. We will be posting new episodes bi-weekly. want to thank everyone who has been listening and sharing. Please leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Please check out the website homegrownwithgcole.com to listen and for all things homegrown. The podcast is now available on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Radio.com and all your podcast platforms. We're also very interactive. Please follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at MyGCole. The video of this interview is also available on YouTube. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is episode 66. And today's episode is brought to you courtesy of Aqua Gem Records' latest release, Only a Smile, by veteran duo Keith and Tex. It is available on iTunes, Spotify, and all your digital retailers. You and your style. Doesn't mean a thing to me Any man will pick you up Just because of the smile you've got But after knowing you As much as I Only a Smile by Keith and Tex, available everywhere. My special guest in studio today, ladies and gentlemen, rarely, and I say rarely, 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 do we get a chance to sit down with somebody whose biography captures an era from beginning to present. All right, sometimes we get a little peace, front end, back end, whatever, but we, you know, beginning to present. Uh, VP Records has been and still is the largest distributor of reggae music in the world. I can be corrected if I'm wrong, but I highly doubt I am. Uh, Stemming from the 1950s, coming all the way up. And um, still, as as their tagline states, they are still miles ahead in reggae music. And today's guest is the matriarch and co-founder of VP Records, soon to be best-selling author. I'm putting it out in the air, putting it out in the ether. Miss Patchin, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, G. Cole, for that introduction. It's, it's, it's shorter than it's supposed to be, but it's, 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 it's my pleasure. Yeah, I'm happy to be here in Florida. Came all the way here to celebrate my birthday, and you got me at the right time. Nice. <laughs> happy 21st when it comes. That's tomorrow, right? Tomorrow. Tomorrow so I celebrate the big one. <laughs> party? Big party going on? Big party going on. Showdown? Yes. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You know, get, get rowdy. Sometimes you got to do that. Right. Got to go up, just have fun, have a blast, create some problems. Make sure you have attorneys with you, security with you, so that, you know, yeah, things happen. Things happen. Yes, but I'm going to have a good day, especially my great-grandson, Gregory, like your name. Great guy. Yes. Great guy. (laughs) Celebrate his 70th birthday. He was born exactly on my birthday, 10 o'clock, seven years ago. Wow. And what a blessing. Wow. So that was a birthday gift in itself. Definitely, definitely. A a gift that keeps on every year. Yes, giving. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Right now, um, we're just VP, the word VP, the company VP, the catalog VP is monstrous. And like we're saying a little bit off camera, you know, we always see that one piece that we see. But a lot of times we don't know, you know, we don't know the engine. We don't know the locomotive. We don't know what keeps the train chugging. So that's why I want to sit on and talk with you today. 
You know, just 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 pick your brain a little bit. Let's start out somewhere around, let's say 1958, right? Randy's was actually the second. Am I right? Randy's was the second store you actually opened. Well, we had a small store down East Street in Kingston. Mm -hmm. That's where we started. Maybe ran it for about a year, and mm -hmm. then we moved at 17 odd period, mm -hmm. and create the name v uh, Randy's. Mm -hmm. In Jamaica, we're going to the name Randy's Record. Wow! 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 And um. For those who don't know, why the name Randy's? How did the name Randy's come about? Well, it's, it came about, the name Randy's came about, my husband used to listen to a radio station mm -hmm. in Tennessee, and one of the person in charge was Randy. Mm -hmm. So I guess he loved that name. He loved jazz. Right, right. And he just patterned that name, and it just stuck on him. Wow. And the name Randy's just was his pet name mm -hmm. and eventually i gave my second son the name randy because wow. we loved it so much so the name randy's is near and dear yes now vp vincent pat chin but before we dive into pat talk to me a little bit about vincent the man himself and his love and connection for the music how did that itself reggae music that is his connection how did that come about in your eyes well, I should I should bring you back over sixty years then. <laughs> we got time. We when, got time. When when I met my husband, you mm -hmm. know, my father really wanted me to be uh, work in the bank, mm -hmm. but eventually I met my husband, and uh, we fell in love. Mm -hmm. And at that time, he was working with a jukebox company mm -hmm. down Harbor Street. And we had these old reject records. Those are old time 45 records. Mm -hmm. And um, starting business, we just wanted something to do to generate some income. So I don't know if it's me suggested or he suggested, let's sell the records, mm -hmm. the old records. So we bought them out from the company. Mm. And um, there we started at E Street to wow. sell in used record. Didn't have a name, just mm -hmm. selling them. <laughs> right. And uh, we were surprised to see how much people liked the old records because American records were not available again in stores. Right. So they treasure the old records. So then, those records weren't necessarily reggae records. No, we didn't. Uh. We didn't. Ha we didn't have a we didn't have a culture named reggae music at then. Wow, it's wow, just wow. American record R and B. Top forty. Mm, mm. R and B, Sam Cooke, The Drifters, Benny King, right. name it, right. Little Richards. Right. We didn't have American rec. We didn't have Jamaican record at that time. Gotcha, gotcha. Wow. The beginnings. I love talking about the beginnings. In, in the 50s, uh, like you said, a lot of genres of music were being pumped into Jamaica. Reggae, as we know, it's still a baby. Inception time coming up. How did your, it's obvious you love the music, but how did your love affair with this new baby, this reggae music come about? Was it more through your husband or was there some affinity that you had with reggae coming up Why we're even sitting here today? Well, looking back... Somehow, although I wanted to be a nurse, mm -hmm. because he was working with a jukebox company, mm -hmm. and I used to go with him around to change the records in the different clubs. Mm -hmm. And I could see the reaction of people, how excited they were when he came in to change the records. Mm -hmm. And I got the love of music and records, because I used to take my typewriter and put the names in the liquor slot. Right. And we did it for many years, for, for many months. I just go because it was fun traveling through the island, sleep right. in the car. Right. I was young, free. Right. So I had fun, and I get to get the love of music, and that's how I get to get into jazz because he loved jazz mm -hmm. and uh, all the popular music that coming out of America. It seems as if all the American records were the only ones we had, you know. Yeah. So. I get to learn the music and I learn, get to learn who is a singer. And it started when I was 18. Wow. Wow. It's, a, it's amazing that, that that culture to some degree never changed because even as I grew up in Jamaica, I, I, I was born in 1978. So growing up in Jamaica then, it's like we still got a lot of the, the top 40 stuff. I don't think it was until IRFM came about that we really had a main staple reggae station. To the point where, you know, most of the songs that were coming out were covers 
of, of the R&B and the pop stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, right now we're sitting there, we're having a nice conversation with Miss Pat, you know, just, just going into the, le the, the legend and the legacy. And of course, we're featuring Barris Hammond Selects, the VP Records 40th anniversary. So here's some tunes. Make sure you go ahead and grab these songs. They're available. The VP catalog is immense. Again, grab something, grab something, grab something. Mighty Diamonds is called Brother Man. Album's called Past the Knowledge. And the Mighty Diamonds. Miss Pat, the only thing people love more than a good love song is a good love story. How did you and your husband meet? Well, my husband used to work with my father in law. Mm -hmm. He used to drive a bread van mm -hmm. and used to deliver bread to the next door store beside us in Greenwich Farm. Mm -hmm. Greenwich Farm at that time, I didn't realize how much artists was living in Greenwich Farm, mm -hmm. especially Bunny Lee, that he knew me from I was maybe 18, 19. Wow. And as I go along talking to other singers, I realized Greenwich Farm really put out a lot of singers wow. and producers looking back. But that's how we met. Mm. And because I didn't want any norm, I wanted, I guess, from I was growing up, I didn't like the norm. When I did dressmaking, I wanted to make it very pretty. Mm -hmm. I didn't want just an ordinary dress. I wanted tucks and frills and everything. Right, right. <laughs> and then <laughs> my dad wanted me to be, to work in the bank, but mm -hmm. the bank was not for me. Right. I wanted something out of the ordinary. So when I met my husband, he was very interesting because mm -hmm. he was a bad boy. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why I was at attracted to him. <laughs> Got a little rebel, a little rebel in you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's part of my love story. <laughs> <laughs> no, everybody's going to want to be a rebel. Everybody. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, you as in VP, you're the hub Randy's, I should say, at that point, for not just music production, but you ended up distribution also. So you dealt with everyone from the artists to producers to musicians, sound systems, radio. Um, take me back a little bit into that time. This is the genesis, if you will, of, of, of this not reggae music, but reggae music business. Give me an insight into the daily happenings in and around Randy's in Kingston. What was a typical day like for you guys? Well, I should tell you that uh, when I started my first store at 17 Odd Parade, it was 10 by 10 space. We wow. rented it in a restaurant. When three people came in, it was full. Wow. And then we extended it. We bought a building. We bought the restaurant. We bought next door building. And we put up a studio. Mm. Because there was a lot of record store around. You know, Prince Buster, Joe Gibbs. Right. Drew Creed, Coxon, many, many stores around that area. Mm -hmm. But what happened that they only sell their product? Gotcha, gotcha. So when I opened my store, I'm saying, well, when the people comes in, they have to go to six, seven, eight, nine stores to buy what they want. Why right. don't I open a one-stop distribution? And I convince them to sell me their product, mm. put on a cent or two and sell it a little more right. to make a profit. And that's how a distribution came about. Gotcha. Also, gotcha. I can remember the small producers, they had to go around to the homes and the different places to sell their record. Mm -hmm. So I also convinced them to leave their records here, show them how to write a consignment note, Whenever, I, whenever they come back, I would check it off, whatever is sold, and I would pay you, and I return the rest. Mm. And that brought me even back to Chris Blackwell. Wow. When Bob Marley record used to come out first, mm -hmm. Chris Blackwell came to give me Bob Marley's record to sell on consignment to. Wow. So I wow. go way back when, from 1958. Wow. So you were somewhat teaching them the business, not just creating the business for yourself, but 
This was educating them on how the business was supposed to be done also. Yes, I was uh, helping them to create more than just going around at the, at the different homes or to sell one one. Leave your record here because this was a place where all the country people came in to buy. Mm -hmm. Sound system. Mm -hmm. Everybody came at my store to wow. buy. And my friend Roy can tell you. I asked my friend Roy, why do you think we were so successful? Mm -hmm. uh, and there had seven, eight, nine, ten stores around me. Some in front. Charlie's right in front with his little cart. Right. Joe Gibbs. Everybody up the lane. Mm -hmm. Because I stuck every record. Mm. I stuck everybody's record, good, bad, and indifferent, because right. somebody's going to want it. And I make it my duty to learn the rhythm, the songs, mm -hmm. the producer, who sing it, what rhythm it came off. I was an encyclopedia because I had to know everybody. If 100 records come out for the week, yeah. I have to know all of them. Wow. In order to sell my customer, mm -hmm. I have to be... On the, on the edge of everything when it comes to music. And um, I had a counter about 20 feet long, and I was on the counter for 20 years selling. Wow. So I know all the producers, I know the singers, I know all the customers. Right at 70 North Parade, they call it Igla's Rest. Mm -hmm. It was a place where everybody would gather to meet someone or to listen what's new mm -hmm. or just to congregate, listen to good music. So it was a really, really nice time. So all yeah. the artists and producers came right there. Everybody was right there. To literally there. idle and yeah, listen to music. Yeah, listen to music and mm. meet their friends and buy music and talk about music, who is hot and what's coming out. Wow. And because of the studio was upstairs, Whenever they want a backup singer, mm -hmm. they would just run down. Delroy Wilson was there, or anybody was there. Come upstairs, wow. come and give you know backup singer. Just there. from hanging on the corner. Just hanging, hanging out right there. Everything was right there. Wow. It, it was like a advertising agency, but with music. Wow. So that's the only time in history that <laughs> hanging out on the corner paid off. Yes, of course. <laughs> 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 and of course, you have everybody selling fruits, vegetables, right. and roast fish and cornbread. That's how Lee Perry make his record, roast fish and cornbread. Wow. And the Congos. <laughs> you know, amazing to hear you say this, right? We, we, I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday talking about dance hall culture. And the fact that many times people think that it's just the distributor, it's just the producer, it's just the artist that, that, that thrives from this. But like you said, it's the same thing now. You have the, 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 the con man, the jerk chicken man, the soup everybody. man outside. Back then, the dressmaker. Everything. The retail store is now so so it contributes to the, to the entire economy. So to make sure it's going to protect the dance hall as a culture, it's definitely 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 viable for everybody. Um, amazing to hear you say that because to me, I'm looking for the visuals and you take me back there again. If Ryan mentioned Idler's Rest, I guess that's Idler's Rest. You know, it was a legitimate address. A legitimate address. Listen. So, 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 so when some people want go into the ghetto to get certain musicians, mm -hmm. Idler's Rest. Idler's Rest. Meet me at Idler's Rest. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yes. The and then that's, what, that's what they get work. You know, that's uh, so Idler's Rest. Take them to the studio. Boop. He's the only at Idler's Rest. Like we said, the only time in history. Idling on the corner. Probably, was probably, a, probably Pat could <laughs> give us some of the names of some of the people. Yeah, who, who, talk, talk to me about some of the people who were out there on Idling's Rest. Idling. <laughs> good idling. Good, good, idling. good idling. Good idling. Well, we, we, we know Delroy Wilson well. We mm -hmm. know the Diamonds. We know Peter Tosh. We, wow. we know Bob Marley. Mm. We know, you know, so many Garnet Silk. Wow. So, so much of the artists. I, I knew them from, they were just like 16, 17, Augustus Pablo. Wow. Um, so Idler's Rest is such an integral part of reggae culture, reggae history, Jamaica music culture, music history that a lot of people didn't know about until today. Idler's Rest. Yep. Trust me, we need an Idler's Rest Museum. <laughs> It would be... Coming it, up soon. Coming, coming up, up soon. <laughs> when am I lying today? <laughs> <laughs> coming up soon. From Idler's Race to Strictly the Best. To Strictly the Best. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Light up on that one right there. I tell you, I tell you. Man, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love sitting down having conversations with people like yourself because there's just so much to learn. And I think a lot of times, you know, we don't have the time capsule, if you will. So it's just a pleasure to sit down with you. It would be, like I mentioned, about 19 years before you'd actually move the store to New York. 
talking about like 1977 there about. Yes. So exactly one year and one month before I was born. Yes, I realized that because so, you said about 1978. Seven, yeah. <laughs> I hope it wasn't because you heard rumblings that I was about to come into the world. I had decided I'm out of here. But, you know, nonetheless, yeah. still love it. Why, why, why did you move Randis to New York? Well, you know, we were going through a lot of political unrest. Mm -hmm. And it was a big decision for us because we were there 20 years. Mm -hmm. We love the area, we love the people, we love everything that we did. But we thought it was a good move for us because the children were... Chris was 17, which was my first son. Mm -hmm. And then we had Clive, my stepson. Mm -hmm. And then Randy, he was 14 and my daughter was 12. Mm -hmm. So we decided to make the move. Right, right, and, right. Uh, we, we had been, you know, I've been traveling before. Because my brother-in-law, which is Victor Chin, which is Vincent's brother, mm -hmm. we used to ship him records to sell in New York. Gotcha. So we were familiar. So when we came to New York in 1977 and really settled down, we couldn't use the name Randy's because he was Chin Randy's already. Oh. So we had to find a new name. Mm -hmm. So getting them in school, vaccinated and everything like that, you know, when you go to a new country, mm -hmm. there's so much things you have to go through. Mm -hmm. And um, school, where to live, where to set up shop. Mm -hmm. We didn't even have a name. What are we going to, when we were, when we were going to register the business, we didn't have a name. Wow. So the first thing came to our mind, why don't you give it Vincent and Pat? Vincent was my husband's first name. Right. And Patricia was my first name. So mm -hmm. we just put it together, VNP, and we put records beside it. Wow. So that's where the name VP. VP Records came about. Nice, nice, nice. And you started where, in Queens? Yeah, we started in Queens, on an area named Jamaica. Mm. Jamaica, Queens. Because my How husband, ironic. <laughs> <laughs> my husband said, this is the place we wanted because I'm reminding of Jamaica so much. Right. That's where we started business. And we never left 40 years, over 40 years now. Mm -hmm. We're still located. Same block, but as I said, we started exactly how we started in Jamaica. Right. A small store. Right. We were only paying like three hundred and fifty dollars a month, mm -hmm. and it was like a little bigger than ten by ten because it had the basement. Mm -hmm. And we started that with one van. And let me tell you, going backward, and my biggest sale is like a hundred and fifty dollar a week. Wow! In New York. In New York. Where cost of we, living ain't we, cheap. Yeah, where we had to um, monitor everything we do. We stay there from nights and nights trying to sell. Mm -hmm. There was a few record store there, I would say. Mm -hmm. My brother-in-law, Chin Randy's, Brad's, Moody's, quite a few. Mm -hmm. And Calypso stores. But, um, and, and about three, four American, American company that sell reggae music. Right, they didn't right. sell the type that we were bringing up. Right. We were bringing up the dance hall and all the different genres, the roots. They weren't they, familiar with that. No, they were bringing up English records. Oh. Like Steel Pulse. Yeah. And, uh, I got they, you. So we came in with more of a bigger type of music. Mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. stocked everything. And then after a time, I realized that the same thing had happened. The Calypsonian didn't sell each other. So I went and dive in Calypso record now, Soka. Right. I didn't understand it at first. Right. And I Till I eventually catch on. Right. right. Till we, till we, 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 um, we then uh, capture the, the Soka Calypso until we make the Soka every year now. I think we're gone quite Soka a few. Gold. Soka Gold. Wow. I didn't know, and I encouraged them to, because they only sell their product. Mm -hmm. So I had to buy one from one store, sell the other store, buy the same record, sell the other store. Mm. So I was the middleman. So you Mid cross pollinate and they could have done that themselves. Yeah, and they didn't do it because they're competing with each other. But for me, there's not I'm selling everybody record because music is music. When I'm saying music is a mission, not a competition. Yes, huh? Right. We just sell everybody mm. money's record. So that's wow. how we get to capture the market. Wow, wow, wow. That's talking about, that, that's business right there that, you know, it's amazing. Like you said, you're going to a new territory. There are people there already existing, doing what they're doing. And not to knock anybody, but you could be doing something the wrong way forever. And apparently, that's what was happening. Ladies and gentlemen, again, we're talking right now with Pat. We got, we, we got more music for you. Comes from Reggae Gone Country. 
Dwayne Stevenson Suspicions Sayamu met you baby and I'm so that's, proud that's, that's when I walk down, down the street mm. I'm like crazy one. this one the world is like I do a story all one. about that one, on one but I get this feeling <laughs> that I'm losing you I get this suspicion the yeah. Different artists. Yeah. Really so you say this is the birth of Strictly the Best right here. Yeah, with, 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 just go ahead. I'm, that, I'm, I'm soaking it all in. I'm a little, I'm a little <laughs> camera and see what's going on here. But uh, talk to me about this one right here. Well, Strictly the Best is one of the best songs that I've ever heard. Mm. Yeah. 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 There were a lot of dance or DJ music coming out. Mm -hmm. But I decided I go to all the different producers, said, you have a hit, you have a hit, you have a hit. Why don't we put it on one record, one LP, and then we would split the money for all of you. And that's how it came about. Because wow. we did not have producers putting their own songs with other producers. Mm -hmm. So I went to them and, and I did. Um, t uh, called, you know, and said, come on, man, let's put it together so that everybody can benefit from it. Right. You have a hit and you have a hit yard. Put them together in one. Yeah. And that's how the first LP uh, developed. Wow. Strictly then, the Best. Yeah, Strictly the Best. I guess, I, and I can assume why you decided to call it Strictly the Best. Yes. Because it's consistent it cons Strictly the best. the best. Yes. Wow. So this was the first LP I made. And I also have another one, which is... Um, Whole of the past. Mm. This was more like the dance hall type. Mm -hmm. DJs and the other one were soft, softer music. Wow. So Did you spend a lot of time like out there in the dance hall? Well, actually, I've never been to a dance hall until <laughs> recently. <laughs> I, I have enough dance in the day, so I don't need to go. I dance all day. I dance all day in the store. <laughs> I'm glad that she mentioned this phrase, you know, because I asked her and she told me the same thing. Yeah. And I used to ask her, you know, how come you do so successful as a, as a shop, you know, as, mm -hmm. a, as a storekeeper? She said, look here, I listen. Mm. to every customer that comes in and if they ask for it two or three times the next time they come they you come to get it so it's by listening wow <laughs> wow i love it i love it i love it so 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 when you're a young lady running you're not going into the dance hall but no you're out and bad just yep. out the <laughs> yes, yes, yes yes well i start to go with my friend now because we have been going quite a few of them because he's a musician and he plays out and i go mm -hmm. and i go out now yeah i got quite a few and i lo and i really really love the dancing because i could see the different movements in the dances mm. especially the dance hall it's really very interesting to see the different moves uh, very <laughs> very 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 nice so I could so. see a Weddy Weddy or, 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 or a Hot Mondays DVD right now and see you on it. Yes. You never know. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. It's, it's all in here. It's all in here. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, talk to me about some of the, when, when you started the label, because you, you went from, you know, the, the store sales to the distribution, like official distribution, and then ultimately VP the label. Because we got VP Records, the, 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 the retail store, and then we have VP, the yes. label. And he started signing artists. Whose idea was it to actually get into the business and actually started signing artists? Well, um, I should say about 18 years ago, mm -hmm. we decided it was being, you know, something when I look, look back. At one time, we could not import records out of Jamaica anymore, you know. Mm. The government had clamped down that we could not buy. So what I did to sell the music, I borrowed their stamper, which is the metal part. Right. And I check off the labels. Mm -hmm. If I wanted 500 of this, 200 of that, 1,000 of this, mm -hmm. I would check the labels and I would take it up in my suitcase mm -hmm. and press the records in America. 
bring back the stamper and pay them. But Miss Pagina is easy, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, I had to find Innovation ways. at his finest. I had, I had to find ways and means <laughs> to sustain <laughs> my culture and to get the artists their money back. How oh, would they wow. sell their product? Wow. I had to do other things to do that. As a matter of fact, when I, when I migrated to America mm -hmm. and the trailer came up, Mm -hmm. And the man, the, tr the, the custom officer said, why are you going with so much food, lady? You know, so we don't have a family here. I said, but we don't have any money to buy the food. So I carry up everything in tin, mm -hmm. tin milk, oil, rice, everything. <laughs> 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 and, I wow. also, and I also pack, pack the trailer with music. Right, you right. They couldn't stop me. <laughs> wow. So, I, I love it. I love it. It's a long time. <laughs> I love it. You, you remember the first artist you actually signed to, 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 to VP Records? I think it's Beanie Man. Beanie Man's the first one? Yes, I think so. Because wow. we were, at one time when we came up, we thought Roots Music would do it. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, they knew Bob Marley. And they only knew Bob Marley. Mm. They didn't know anybody else. I said, don't know Burning Spear? Yes, I know. No. You don't know Lee Perry. No. You don't know Gus. You, you don't know only Bob Marley, and there's very few. So I said, my my um, when I when we couldn't get the records out, mm -hmm. we started to sign it and then produce the record in America. Gotcha. And why we had so much labels? That's Roy can tell you. We had about fifteen different types of labels. So when I was speaking <laughs> to an American person said oh what a great brilliant idea because GM have all different types of vehicles same GM but they have to make sure <laughs> that they have different yep. names yep so I had about 15 different labels because I didn't want them to know that the same company the bank but mm. I would <laughs> you, you know all the different labels we have right? wow so I have to you know think of different ideas coming up to run the business innovation yep. before automation Yes, yes. Wow, there's yes. a lot of thinking going on here. And then it was an exciting time at North Parade because the studio, mm -hmm. I could see where the young singers had the opportunity, but they didn't have the mm -hmm. money to rent the studio. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what I did is give them the studio time, help them to go press the record. They'll bring back the record to me and I would sell it and pay them. So like a stepping stone for them, you know, right, because right. the other studios were so expensive. Mm -hmm. So having the studio right in, right in Kingston, they would do everything there. Wow, and one stop shop, literally. Yes, and then we get it pressed. Wow. So we are, we, that's how their distribution came about. Wow, wow. It's amazing to sit down and listen to this stuff because, again, you know, you think you know, but you don't know until you know. Reggae Gold is another, another successful series, right? And you already had Strictly the Best. What was the difference? Why did you end up coming up with Reggae Gold in addition to Strictly the Best? Well, Reggae Gold, we're trying to create different markets. Mm -hmm. So I think the Strictly the Best was the dance hall type, mm -hmm. and Reggae Gold was the more singing one. Ah, gotcha. And we had two different. So we tried to capture the different. Because some people would want a lot of dance hall, while others want the softer ones. Mm -hmm. So the softer one. And then we had two volumes right. at the same time. So we put the softer tune and then the dance hall or the heavier tune on the, on other, the other one. Wow. So be creative. Wow. I dig that. But as I told you before, I didn't like anything ordinary. I'm always thinking of yeah, new outside things. Of the outside the box, always thinking of new ideas. Because customer tells you a lot if you listen to If you, you listen. Know. If you Problems listen, we don't oftentimes listen. We, we, because when we started the Strictly Best and Reggae Gold, mm -hmm. we had to do a research. So I would pick radio DJ like you. Mm -hmm. I would go England, find out what they like best. I go to the islands, find out what they like mm -hmm. best. Florida, find out Jamaica, and right. get the best radio DJs and let them pick. Then wow. we would have about 50 songs. Then from that 50 songs, we would narrow it down that when a DJ picks up an LP, there got to be something that he contribute right, right, to that right. LP. And so that's we smart. really take the, 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 the resource from right. the people like you themselves. Wow. What, what do they like best? 
Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. I love I, the thing that gets me is the innovativeness. Just finding a way that there is, you know, there's a way to get from point A to point B. It might not be a straight line, but I'm getting to point B. Right. I dig and, that. And when somebody wants a record, I'll find it for him wherever it is. If mm -hmm. I go worry, I'll ten times to find it. I'm going to find it. <laughs> but you're them. getting that record. Yes, because I know you how how important it is for them. Right. When they want a record. Right. And it gives me a lot of joy to do that too. Right. There was a time when a customer was stopping over in in New York and he wanted some records. Mm -hmm. And when my and he was maybe he was traveling and he had a stopover flight mm -hmm. and he wanted a particular record and my husband took it to the airport. He was so overjoyed. Wow. If the records were a cost twenty dollars, I gave my husband fifty dollars. Wow. Because he was so happy that he got them. He got that record. I could see, you know, maybe he wanted to give his mother, his girlfriend the sentiments mm -hmm. with the music. Mm -hmm. And I was able to do it for him. And a lot of people, even when I went to California, he said, Miss Pat, when your little box of record come to me, I'm overjoyed because I'm stuffing it with anything that they can read <laughs> or know or a chart or something. Yeah. So wow. they're, they're so happy when they got my package. Wow. Wow. Amazingly enough, as I listen to you, it's obvious the passion for the business. It's obvious the passion for the music. But it seems to me that what made you thrive and what made you successful more than anything else was the passion for the people. Definitely. You know, because getting that get getting the stuff to the people was what was more like I said, ten trips to work, I yeah. I probably wouldn't have made two. But yeah. you know yeah. it go. Uh, yeah, if it took me ten calls for the night, right. my Roy can tell you. <laughs> I need and sometimes when the people don't know the music, I say, Hum it for me. Who sing it? Wow. And it's the same thing when I'm selling a new customer. Mm -hmm. I try to find out all about where they're located, mm -hmm. who is around you, what type of people are around you. What age group? I try to give them as much information to help them because I've been through it. Right. I know to educate them. Mm. And I try to let them, you know, try to really put them in, in line that they can be successful. Wow. Because I know if they're successful, I'll be successful yeah. too. So I try to teach as I, as I go along what I've learned. from wow. Data analytics before the information age. Is what it boils down to. Uh, uh, you mentioned earlier, people having their preference. Some people love the dancehall stuff, and some people like the softer stuff. Hence, you creating the two different series. Right. Um, it's amazing because we have that conversation today in terms of what's driving the market. Is it reggae? Is it dancehall? Some people say dancehall no, you know, especially for the the hype and so forth. Reggae has the longevity, but it doesn't sound like it's a modern thing. It sounds like that 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 little bit of a of a of a I don't want to say conflict. But two different genres could try, it was from back then. And we're still having that right now. And, and there's, there's another formula to it. It mm -hmm. goes with your age. Mm. Because I'm um, within 60 years, I could see when they're young, mm -hmm. they'll go for the dance hall. Mm -hmm. When they get a little older, they go for the roots. And when they get older, they'll go for the softer one. Mm. So it goes with our age as we get older. I got you. The young people, they gravitate. And the dance hall is what really put us on the map, believe wow. you, because it was similar to hip-hop. Right, right, so right, right. So they could right. identify it. Mm. Then after a time, they get older in their 30s, 40s. Then they go to the roots music because now they are sort of want to hear the words, the songs, the meaning of the song. Mm -hmm. Then when they get a little older like me, they go to the softer music. Right, right. So that, you know, it goes Everything serves age. a purpose and yes. everything has a market and a demographic. Yes. I will have a dancehall artist out there to put you, tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Big up the dancehall artists out there. Uh, amazing. I, I, used to, I used to do gigs with my band, downtown Fort Lauderdale. There's this guy outside. He sells jerk chicken, but it was a ras, so I never eat the jerk chicken. Right, so I had no idea what it tasted like. I don't know, and for that reason, I never bought it. But you, do you consume the reggae music? Are you, are you, are you, are you that guy that's not eating the chicken, or do you consume the reggae music also? Do you listen a lot of reggae? Do you digest a lot of that music too? I'm fascinated. I listen to it, but I'm fascinated about the music and how they can take words and just put it together, especially the DJs, mm -hmm. you know, when they're rapping the music mm -hmm. and without even thinking, they're just rapping in the rhythm. Mm -hmm. I'm fascinated with that. 
what marvel me sometime when I'm in New York and it's summer mm -hmm. and they you stop at the stop sign mm -hmm. and you have cars here and cars and all of them blasting reggae music. Mm -hmm. I say, Oh my god, I can't believe that I'm in America. Wow. You know, and my travels mm -hmm. I could see how much people love our music. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been to Spain, I've been to Mexico, I've been to Cuba. Right. And, and let me tell you, they just love our music. They appreciate it very they much. They appreciate it very much. And let me tell you, they really study more than us. Because yeah. when I went to Cuba, mm -hmm. and when you hear the talk about Bob Marley, mm. the talk about his looks, his hair, the, the songs, the message in the song, his culture, everything. Right. As if he was God. He wow. they knew everything about Bob Marley. Wow. And they, and they don't know, even know. Yeah. And when I went to Ratatam in Spain, some of the songs that they are playing, even from my husband's time, mm -hmm. they're just 18, 19, 20 year old kids. Wow. And they're going way back and listen to these music. That's right. why music never dies. Right. Because when you hear a music for the first time, mm -hmm. although it's 50 years old, the sweetness is there still. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it never dies. And it brings you right back to and that place every time. it brings you right time. back. You know, I'm, 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 I'm pretty surprised, and I'm, I'm willing to bet you, most people listening to us right now don't know, pretty surprised. Miss Pat, it won't sound to me like you're a dancehall fan, you know. When it, it sounds to me like at the end of the day, you know, the reggae is there, you know, but it sounds like it's dancehall, is your thing. Well, I literally was born and grew up in a dancehall, you know. So yeah. So my attitude to the dancehall is quite different from a lot of people who just right. look at it from a distance. Because they're seeing genre, you're seeing dancehall as the but, place. And but the, I'm and also thing. seeing where my mother actually operated a business. Mm -hmm. you know, the jukebox, the bar, the customers, the actual, mm -hmm. the, the, the financing of my family was... From the dancehall. A, a dance, it was a dancehall. So your appreciation of it yeah. is, 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 is real. It's inside, yeah. Mm. And that, mm. That's what she said to all, the, all of her children to school. Yeah. She sent all of her sisters and brothers, children also. She, she took care of the entire Off of the dancehall. Pat, Pat remind me of my mother. Yeah. How, how she took charge of her family. Yeah, yeah. Coming to town from the country. Wow. And operating the first dance space on Olympic Way. Wow. In a rough neighborhood, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> the real dance. Wow, wow, wow. I, I so appreciate hearing because it's a conversation that, that, that's endless. You know, it, it happens every single day. And I think because we, 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 we want to appreciate, call it what it is. We want to appreciate what we want to appreciate, and we want to not appreciate what we don't want to appreciate for whatever reasons. Yeah. Um, but the thing that you said that is so profound, and I think it is it is instrumental for people to understand, is that timing thing that you said, where when you're younger, you're into this. As you grow, and I find myself going through that a lot too, yeah. where my appreciation is not that I don't appreciate the dance hall stuff right about now, but my my critique my, my critique comes from a dollars and cents standpoint. Where where's my nine ninety nine going? And right now I'm more inclined to go get the the reggae yeah. music. Mm -hmm. And like you said, in a couple of years from now, when I pass a little threshold, I'm gonna go for the softer, as you say. But everything serves its purpose and everything is very, very relevant. I really I really enjoy when I go to the dances party. Mm -hmm. Or the or the movement of the dance off is mm -hmm. very exciting, right? And and it and it it is give you emotion and how they feel with the with the songs, right? It's really it's really enlightening, yeah. and as I said, whenever you they might go in the dances for whatever reason, maybe mm -hmm. they don't feel well, they come out, they feel much better. Yeah. yeah. Therapeutic. Therapeutic. Well, Therapeutic. Well, it does serve also a sociological function because mm -hmm. I remember that. A young woman who was, you know, very and all that. That's how she actually, you know, meet a partner and so right. on. So, so it plays a, a sociological role in in, mm. in, 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 in the society also. It's 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 a voyeur's paradise. Most yeah. young men would you say that's where it goes to actually. Fine enough. Is naturally drawn yeah. to the form of a woman, you know, dancing, you know. But there, there are others who go there just to meet their friends, you know, drink and, and, and have fun, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, when you don't listen to Roy, I'm going to try to find a wife in a dance hall. It never works out. It never, it never, it never, it never really works out. <laughs> 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 While I pray for my blessings to rise. <laughs>
But one of my favorite all time is the guy that's soon. Sell us up with your mercy. Many fool, but they're starving. Have a lot and still wanting. Jam without you, we're empty. Fill us up with your mercy. The many fool, but they're starving. Have a lot and still wanting. Jam without you, we're empty. Fill us up with your mercy. Man shall not live by bread alone. You're so right when you talk about the bait stamps, you know, because when I listen to these songs, uh, you know, in, 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 in high school, I had a Garnet Silk cassette. It's Growing was the album. I had that and I had a couple of others. You can, and it's this boarding school where you cherish everything because mom might not come until the weekend. So, you know, if you're money run out by Thursday, you might be running a rough situation until the weekend. You can't borrow anything from me. You can borrow my money. You can borrow my clothes. You can borrow, but you can't borrow my Garnet Silk cassette. That's the reverence. That's just how and what it means. Um, again, Roy say must go look for wife in that dance hall. Don't do it. Don't do it. Quite dangerous. Just go and uh, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> go and have fun. <laughs> and enjoy yourself. And enjoy yourself. And come out with a different mood. A different mood. And the music is uplifting. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> like we said earlier, reggae is always, for the most part, reflective of the current climate. In Jamaica and sometimes the world at large. Um, reggae does that. In your eyes... Because um, cause, cause you see and you hear sometimes firsthand the music before the masses hear it a lot of times. Mm. Um, is that still the case today where reggae music, dance song music is reflective of the culture? And in and, and, and the same time as we ask a question like that, do you think artists have more responsibility to the culture right now than just making good music? Well, you know, that, that, uh, that conversation came about at one time. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I think it's a self-expression for the artist. I mean, they're responsible for yes, but I think mm -hmm. I think like a painting, you know, they express themselves through the, the art of what they're painting. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they have to express themselves by by their singing and their words. Mm -hmm. But as you know, words can mean a lot. So. A lot of times we had to make two different CDs. One was the clean one and mm -hmm. one was not the so clean one. Right, right. But people, we give people choices. Right. And I think the artists have choices to what they, you know, want to make. Mm. So we don't take that away their pride from right. them. It, so creative licensing, good. hey, do you think? Yes, it is. It's up know, to the consumer and the distributor to... Whether they mm. want to buy it or not. And we, we had uh, started to make two CDs. Mm -hmm. Or we put a sticker on one CD that's, you know, right, right. Not, not recommended for kids or whatever. Gotcha. But we, we didn't want to monitor the artists, their mm. freedom to do what they feel to do. I give you a joke. One time when my dad moved to Ultraes, mm -hmm. and you know Ultraes is one of the second biggest. That's my home. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. And, <laughs> and he used to say, but Pat. Oh my God, I don't know what they're saying in the dances. I don't know what they're saying in the music. But my daughter has in that business, so I have to like it. <laughs> what, are, what are they saying? <laughs> so now you got to translate. <laughs> what are they saying? But he didn't care. He said, okay, my daughter is in that business, so I have to like it. I but I don't know it. what the hell they saying. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, Big up our father, man. Um, Sasa Williams, you know. Um, big up, big up, that's big up. The, that's the other side of her family, you know. That yeah. we know more the Chinese side, but right. Sasa Williams was the Indian side of her mm. family. Her dad, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> big up pops big up i love that though and i'll tell you this if the world at large if more parents took that approach we'd be in a good place we can't always come back to what's going on because we don't understand ask your daughter to translate you know what i mean you know we always said to whom much is given much is required um in your opinion as a because as a label because the music comes out like you said you don't censor you put stuff out but is there a response we, we, i always ask what's the responsibility of the artist you know what I mean? In terms of creative and what you're putting out to the masses. Is there, do you feel like as VP you have a responsibility in terms of the music that you're putting out? Or you just, just like the artist, creative freedom, creative licensing, let's just put some music out. I think it, it's up to them to know how far they want to go. Mm -hmm. But we don't monitor them. Right. As you said, we have, we have uh, ways of how to sell it mm -hmm. by putting the stickers on or to make two CDs. Mm -hmm. 
but I think it's their creativity. And you don't, you know, you don't, you don't bind anybody. No. I, I appreciate that and I dig that a lot because I always feel like there's not always good or bad. Sometimes people look at whatever you don't consume as derogatory when truth be told it might just be not age appropriate. You right. know what I mean? Right. Who says alcohol, which it kind of is bad, but it's just not for a certain age group. Right. You know, so I, I feel like it's the same thing with the music and, and it's, I, 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 why I ask you that is a lot of times, just like we talk about our evolution as human beings, and at some point we listen to this, at some point we listen to that, some point, a lot of times when we, when, when, we, when we mature, we act like we didn't listen to that last yeah. year. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And oh, that was never, no, nah, me, no, never consumed that. Yeah. But I think that's what it is with the music, is sometimes we just have to realize, maybe it's just not for you. Doesn't mean bad, just not for you. And I love that. A few reggae record labels and distributors have come and gone. Not everybody stood the test of time, um, despite putting out great music, because some of them did put out great music. What is it in your eyes about VP Records um, that has allowed you to stand the test of time? Well, I would say for six over 60 years mm -hmm. we have been in the business, it's our culture. Mm -hmm. We embrace our culture. I know sometimes you put out 10 records and one hit and nine hit, but you know, we have to be there for the artists, mm -hmm. for the culture to develop new singers. And um, it's our culture. Right, right, And right. whether you make money or not, yes, we have to have money to pay our bills. But the other part of it is because we love our culture. Right. And that's what we have been doing for many years. You know, whether it makes money, plenty of money, little money, no money. Right. It's an investment that we contribute over the years to develop new artists, give the, their talent and their time, and uh, make good music for the consumers, and to give back to our charities. I and love we that. Have, we have been doing a lot for giving back, you know. I love that. I love that. And, um, you know, we talk artists because longevity is key. And I feel like, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, the record business, the immediate gratification is normally not there. Sometimes if you're investing in an artist, you may not see real returns till way down the road. But a lot of times, the relationship may not last as long. So sometimes you have an artist that you've poured an investment into and um, the returns don't come until they're elsewhere. You know, so there's a lot. The business side of it can get. How do you navigate? Because you meet artists. Sometimes you, you like them. You like they're human beings. You like this particular person. But when business doesn't coincide with my personal, how do you navigate that? Well, we can't please everyone. Mm -hmm. We try. Sometimes we make the first, second, third LP didn't sell. Mm -hmm. But at least I think by even letting them try, mm -hmm. it means a lot to them. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, no record is ever, no music is ever bad. It's just a matter that sometimes it comes out before time. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's not the right time. Mm -hmm. But if if I if we invest and it doesn't sell or the consumer doesn't buy it as well. It gives that artist some gratification that, you know, a lot of times they would prefer to consumer would buy a record. Instead of buying food, mm -hmm. they buy a record. Because it, you know. <laughs> and I, I think it's the same thing with the singers. And not all of them is going to be it, but it gives them a, a channel. It gives them something to look forward. Maybe they're going to be a good singer, but they could be something in, in the music industry mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. gives them a jump start to think of another way. Yeah. They can be a producer. They can be a DJ like you. can be the radio. can be anything. Mm -hmm, they can mm -hmm. be business. It's all in the form of music. Right. But well, you're still in the same environment the passions there is just right. one different side of the fence or one different side of the microphone i should say yes and, and i love where the music is going because i've seen third and fourth generation mm -hmm. is doing the same thing but in a different way right, right, a lot right. of the artists they have their children doing the same thing but mm -hmm. in a different form maybe a producer a musician right. right i dig that i dig that the gift that keeps on giving um the, the music business, as does music itself, continues to evolve. And um, oftentimes, that's where we see the dissolution. Sometimes some business is not surviving. As we said, a lot of record labels have not made it. But the evolution is one thing that's constant. It never, the only thing constant is change. In your eyes, especially from the vantage point you have right now, 
you're you've spent all the time in the trenches hands-on everything goes on you're a part of it i'm sure right now you do probably get the opportunity sometimes to sit back um from maybe the overseer standpoint and um and see what's going on how do you feel that vp has handled the evolution over the years well, I've seen the changes from selling a LP or a 45 or a vinyl come right to CDs and from cassette to CDs to now it's digital. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy that my children really gravitate for the business. My son Randy came in at the same time when we were going digital. Right. So we had to learn, we went back and learned all about how to put the music on digital how to sell it, and I really like where we are mm -hmm. because you don't have to make the record, package the record, ship the record. Mm -hmm. You could just put it on the tape and push a button and it's all over the world. Mm. So it, it's, it's much easier. You make less money, but right. it's more worldwide. Right. It can be spread easily, mm -hmm. but it's a long transition we had to go through. Wow. And uh, we are in the process of teaching that now mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we um, started VPAL, which mm -hmm. is a cradle for VP records. Right. That's the digital show, side. The digital to mm -hmm. show the young artists, producers, how to gain money for themselves. Mm. You can put it on the internet and you get a lot of leaks and people like it, but how do you call it a royalty? Right, right, right. How do you sustain yourself? Mm -hmm. you got to have a way how to do it. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. So that's what we're in the process of teaching how to collect their royalty. Right. And 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 and, and the royalty in, in the digital form. I love that. That's 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 commendable because we, we, we see the, 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 the internet and the, um you know the digital market space and I think people think it's easier than it really is. Um it's easy to put stuff up. It's hard to recoup stuff now. Yes, you know and how and how do you collect your royalties? Yeah. yeah. We we have to learn from the bigger companies too mm -hmm. and this was a learning experience very hard because we come from selling the hard copy a hard copy mm -hmm. to selling just transferring of of a, of a music yeah a file very hard <laughs> that was very hard but i'm glad that my kids catch on to it and also have my second third generation also in the business my Grandson Stephen is in the digital market, so nice. he talks to Spotify, uh, Apple, and all those. It's it's a learning process. I can imagine. I can imagine. You, like like you know, you've seen like you said the vinyl come to cassette, to, to 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 CD, to MP3, to the streaming. Have you, on your own, had your uh, what the hell is going on moment yet? Yes, yeah, sometimes it marvels me, but I'm glad and I'm very optimistic because I always want to learn new things mm -hmm. and I've seen it changes over the years. I'm happy to be alive to see changes mm -hmm. and I'm happy to say that vinyl is coming back in yeah, 50 yeah. years ago. So I'm happy that some of the artists that did not make it 50 years ago, they're making it now. Right, right, yeah, right. And people want to see them. Mm-hmm. They want not only to hear them, they want to see the artists. Right, right. So there's more opportunity for everyone. And even the ones I that are no longer with us, it's like they're, they're children. Yeah. And their children's children, children yes. can benefit. And, and we always have the issues of, you know, we do have a lot more knowledge right now based on the fact that the knowledge is more at our fingertips. They back then did not. So there's a lot of paperwork, back end stuff that's got to be tied together. But at least their children now can in, to some degree see rewards from what you know their parents and their four parents have done yes and, and they're smarter the young people are very smart now. yeah and i'm happy that they're also creating business for themselves mm -hmm. because they're producers and they own their own business yeah. and from time to time you know we work together right and i'm happy for them that they can see it's hard but if they stick with it mm -hmm. and have a passion of what they want that will be okay i love that i love that i love that right now reggae in my eyes has grown so far and so wide that it's transcended our shores and even our demography and 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 there are very many successful reggae artists that have never been in jamaica you know they haven't seen the shores of jamaica and they're not even necessarily viewing the reggae music as as borrowing from the culture it's just we're just making music out here so as a result of that, the conversation then comes up, 
are we losing reggae to foreigners? How do you feel about that conversation? From you, again, from your vantage point, is that a concern at all? Competition is always good mm -hmm. because it helps us to see that we need to do better. Mm. I mean, we are original and we are happy that we are original. But we, being original means that we have to study more. We have to do more. Right. We have to learn how to talk, how to dress, how to do an interview, mm -hmm. and how to be punctual. If mm -hmm. you bring up an artist and it's that time they're supposed to show up, they need to show up. So we have a lot to go. Yeah. We have a lot to learn, too, wow. as we go along. Mm. But we, we'll make it because right. competition is always good. You always want to do better. Right. And you always strive to do the best. But there's a lot of things that goes with it, too. Right, right, right. We have right. to be disciplined. We have to, you know, mm. know. I love that. I, I, the thing is, there's a lot of producers, there's a lot of musicians, there's a lot of artists that watch the program. So I always try to get some, some form of information, some form of knowledge for them because, you know, we, we always, people talk, and the majority of talk is idle talk. So it's always good to get information from somebody like yourself. Music in general, right? But, but particularly reggae music is a male-dominated business, right? But I see a lot of, I see a lot of women having success right now, artist-wise. And I kind of feel like you are an inspiration. Um, I think ladies are taking the lead in many avenues outside of even the artistry. Um, how has your experience being across the gender line, not only a woman in the business, but to some degree, in my eyes, that is, the woman in the business? Give me a little, talk to me about, you know, being a lady in reggae music. Well, back home, you know, I never thought about being a woman in doing a man's job. Mm -hmm. But when I came to America... When I used to do telemarketing, they, mm -hmm. would, they would come onto the phone and I would say, put on a man to me, put on a man. I don't think you know what I want. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that there was a barrier about women mm -hmm. having to do producing and so on. But in Jamaica, I felt like it was just a job. Right, right, right. I didn't feel like I'm different from a woman that was every day selling our fruits and vegetables on the street side. Mm -hmm. It was just a job. Mm -hmm. But when I came to America, I realized that it was a man's world I was in. But back home, I didn't. Mm -hmm. And I should praise my husband because he allowed me to do what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. He was all you know, everywhere with the artists. But I stayed in the store and I learned and I talked to the producers, the singers, and do what I... I never class myself as a man's job I'm doing. Just doing the job. Because there's so much Jamaican woman that does everything. Mm -hmm. They look after the kids, they work, and they, they still survive. So I would say to any woman out there, if they want to do anything, they can do it. Wow. They don't have any, any special one that women can do. Right, right, right. And um, it was a little... You know, it, 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 it set me down a little when he said that I couldn't sell the music because I didn't know what I, they want. But I've already spent 20 years on the counter. Mm. There's not a record that they could hum or, or words in a song that I couldn't find for them. Wow. Wow. And um, somebody just told me, you know, Downbeat, the mm -hmm. ruler. Mm -hmm. He was giving me a little story, which I didn't even remember. He said to me. One day he wanted a record, particular record because he was playing out. It was a big competition. And mm -hmm. he walked from Crossroad right down and nobody knew that song. And he came to my store and I said, hum it for me. Mm -hmm. And it was a version of a garnet silk and nobody knew it. Wow. Because it didn't have any name. You know, mm -hmm. and we scratch off the names mm -hmm. because the sound system and want to be the first to play. Right. right. So they always scratch it off. Mm -hmm. And I was the only one who knew it. Wow. And he said he have never forgot that <laughs> incident. So don't bleed. Win, 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 win the clash tonight there because of you. <laughs> don't beat. Cash a check, baby. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. Didn't <laughs> So unbeknownst to you, you're actually a selector too. We need to add selector to your title. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're chopping it up. We're chopping it up. We're chopping it up. Check this one out. <laughs> nice. 
This is Signal, ladies and gentlemen, reggae music again. We're just giving you some teasers. Make sure you go out there and pick up the albums, pick up the music. It's dope, 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 dope. Pat, you've, you've, you've dealt with your fair share loss, you know, from, from your husband, parents, close friends, your grandson, stuff like that. Um, but you still find the, the, the strength, the, 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 the wherewithal, the, the fortitude to carry on doing this business. Talk to me about just that will, that strength. Sometimes I feel like everything about us comes from somewhere. You know, if somebody asks me, where do I, why do I pray so much? Well, I get it from my grandma. You know what I mean? Um, why do I, where does the ambition come? I get it from my mom. Talk to me about just your will. Where does that come from? Well, um, I would reflect back from my parents. My father is Indian mm -hmm. and my mother is Chinese. Mm -hmm. And you know, when the Chinese came to Jamaica, leave from away to China, months on a ship and... Mm. They have a determination to make life better for their children. Right. And I find that with the Indians and the Chinese and even the African, mm -hmm. they want to make a better life for the next generation. Right, right, right. So when they came, they couldn't talk English, but they set up a little Chinese shop in a rural area mm -hmm. because they wanted to do a service. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when they came in, they couldn't speak English, and the Jamaican couldn't understand them either. Mm -hmm. How do they sell, and how do they credit? Mm -hmm. I think it's amazing. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm thinking about it right now. The I, right, the right, <laughs> piece of paper. I'm trying to think. I'm thinking about it right now. The oh, right nice. piece of paper, and stick it down on a piece of nail. And a week time or two weeks time, when they come to pay, they find the paper. Right, right, So right. it was face, they recognize them from their face. Wow. And then they grew up like that, a service. And that's how they, even the sound system came about. Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. The shop is where everybody hung out. And that's the way the politician would keep their meeting. Mm -hmm. And going back to my dad, my dad was big in politics when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. And he would have trucks. And you know the trucks have these sides. And yeah. he would put down the sides, put the sound system on the truck. And that's how people know where the next meeting would be. Mm. They would park it at the different areas. And people, then the music would play and the DJ would, you know, come on. That's how the people come around to hear the, the politician talk. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we and, we and had to survive some way or another. And, and yeah. that was the starting her, her, of... Um, her dad, um, Salsa William, was one of the first... Um, Investors in IVFM. Mm. Yes. Mm. In Ocho yes. In Ocho West. Yes. <laughs> really? Saw, yeah, mm. he saw the value mm. of it. Sometimes it's just vision. They say sight is one thing, you know, vision is another. <laughs> <laughs> Being able to see doesn't mean you have vision, boy. I tell you that much. Because the music holds the people so that the politician come and come out and talk what they want to say. Right, right, right. But the right. music is what brings the people together right. to stand up and listen. Wow. So that's where it all started. And that's why I'm thinking about... <laughs> You know, all the DJs would go and just sing, just DJing the music. That's how it comes about, the DJs. Mm. They were just talking. <laughs> right. Sometimes they talk about politics, something. And, and, and the song is, I don't know if you remember that politics is in the songs too. Yeah. <laughs> Our music is very, <laughs> can be very political. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Everything yep. happening, the, the let's, let's sing it. <laughs> <laughs> you had one yep. party here and one party here. And, uh, you know, they sing against each other. And, yeah. You know, and Political song Political, clash. yeah. Wow. This is, a word, this is a war of words. War of words. In, <laughs> so and and, and to some degree it hasn't changed. Very creative. Right? Very creative. Uh, I love that, though. I love that. It's, it's our culture. And, and like we said, the dance hall, reggae music, 
it speaks the language of the because from my vantage point the dance hall was where we went for the news and because radio it was controlled you know there's certain things you're not here on the radio and um, so you go to the dance hall to hear that stuff and the reggae also reflected the climate what was going on so for the most part whomever wasn't going to be able to tune into JBC have to go wait till the sound cassette they come from point yes. A to point B to know what's going on actually uh, reggae didn't play in, play on the radio you know? mm-hmm when we started with, with Ska and Rocksteady, right. they didn't play them because they said they weren't good music. Right, right, I right. guess the same thing with hip hop. Mm. But the people is the one that really drive the music yeah. to say, yes, it is good music. Gotta play what the people want. Because I remember Bonnie Lee was telling me some of his incident to play his record in the night. And my husband was the same because when he made Independent Jamaica, We'll Be Lovers, they didn't play them on the radio. Mm-hmm. But when we got independent in 1964, mm-hmm. that's the time we started to sell the music. Gotcha. He used to, Bonnie said, used to take off the label mm-hmm. and put on his label. And while they're thinking they're playing another label, it's Bonnie's record playing. <laughs> <laughs> Trick them. <laughs> so you and Bonnie, you and Bonnie are subscribed to the same theory. I like it. <laughs> and then... My husband had to go after 12 o'clock where the big bosses weren't there to get a record play. You know, mm. so they had to do a lot of things to really, <laughs> you know, subsidize to the Jamaican music. Mm-hmm. It was hard at first. I can't imagine. Because they, they say it's not good music. Nobody want to hear those trash. Right. Mm-hmm. Eventually the people. People want to trash. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, bring that thing up. Mm. No, you, you, your, your children are heavily involved, like you mentioned. Um, and your grandchildren, some of uh, in the in the production and promotion side of, of VP, the digital side and so forth, um, a lot of that's done by them. Now, how involved are you still in 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 the actual operations? Well, I'm part out and part in, but <laughs> I still listen to music all the while and talk to people in the music business because I can give them ideas that they don't know because I'm always listening to people and hear what people are saying. Wow. I went to Spain and I saw um, Janine and mm-hmm. I said, Chris, I saw a beautiful lady. That's how Janine came to sign with us. Wow. And, and, and I should say we have about seven, eight women on our genre now that nice. we have signed. Nice. Uh, Itana. My grandson was telling me about Atana when he met her in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. And he would play our songs. Oh my God, and we come become great friends. You right. know, every now and then we talk. And so you keep doing what you're doing, keep doing it. And he said, She and, and admire me because mm-hmm. I tell her, you know, don't worry about. She told me when she started to sing first. Mm-hmm. And she would go on a stage show. And they would keep putting her back. Not your time now, not your time now. Mm-hmm. She was supposed to go on to sing. Right. And eventually, sometimes she didn't even get to sing because wow. it wasn't her time now. Right, right. And that's how I guess now I'm happy that they're, not, they're coming in not only with a song and their voice, but they're doing extra. Right, right, right. In, 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 a full in package. The, in a package, yes, mm. they are. They're very unique, and I'm so happy right. that women are really going out there and showcase their talent. Right. And I'm happy for them. Wow. Keep doing it. Big up the ladies. I love it. I love it. I love it. I've done shows where it's just ladies all night. And I'm not even talking about the the, the, the regular names, the Atanas and so forth. I'm talking about even the young crop yeah. artists right now and doing it well. Um, I always wonder, being, again, in the trenches as long as you are hands-on as you are because you've seen every angle, every facet of the, of, of the business, the family business, is it ever a, a, a struggle or was it a struggle to, to step back and say, you know what, you guys do this? Was it a struggle at all? Yes, it is. After you're doing it so long and sometimes you see mistakes or not mistakes really, but you could do it a different way because mm-hmm. I've gone through that before. Mm-hmm. But I have to step back and say, well, they have to do it their own way. Mm-hmm. I usually get a little upset when my granddaughter put out some of the the CDs with the pictures, mm-hmm. and I said, isn't that too, a little too, <laughs> showing too much skin? <laughs> but who am I to say? Right, That's right, a new right. generation. Right. I, I'm 80 years old. Who am I going to tell a 30-year-old, 20-year-old, that's too 
mm, oh, too dear. risky right yes, about now. But yeah, they're doing it, so I allow them because I want them to develop their own talent and their own, you know. I understand. Uh, I'm not in their bag anymore, so I have to step back <laughs> and allow them. And they're doing so, and they're doing good so far. I like it. And um, and and the age, the digital age. I mean, where they're what they're doing, I couldn't do that. Right. Although I've had to learn to text and email in order to talk <laughs> in order to talk to my grandkids. In order to talk with them, I had to learn. Got a new communication so, method. Yes. So I'm. A, I, I love learning. That's right. my hobby. I love to learn new things. <laughs> I never stop learning. Well, so so they're not watching right now, and I'm a block. Don't worry about it. Um, do you ever veto them sometime and say, "Yo, Chris Randy, oh no, 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 tune that." Big joke. Many times. <laughs> <laughs> Many times. I said to them, you're in the office. You have to talk to the people on the street. They know what's going on. The street is where I learned. I said, you get all there. I said, this is that. And I give you a nice joke about how um, when we signed Sean Paul mm -hmm. and Atlantic made two DV, two vid um, um, commercials. Um, video mm -hmm. and they want us to decide which one to put out first. Mm -hmm. Do you know who told us which one to put on first? This 12 year old girl, wow. Christina, wow. said, Daddy, put this one out. Yeah, and it was the one get busy. Mm. So, you know, they all allowed us to make the choice. Yeah. And who we talk with the kids, you gotta, they're they're they're, they're the ears that's dialed in. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. But even that in itself is is, 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 is is a talent, knowing what resources to employ. In this case, a 12-year-old. Yeah. Wow. Wow. You don't know what you like. You don't know what you like. <laughs> <laughs> Although I step back, I'm still, the, uh, my ears are still in the street. Wow. Because I'm still listening and talking to people. And I think even... Nor, now that I have the time, I listen even more now. Wow. Because I know everything. Although I'm not in there every day, I still know what's going on. Because some things I can tell them and they don't know. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm still convinced that there are some DVDs out there, a Weddy Weddy and Dirty Fridays, and you're on them. I just, I just, I just, I just, I, I, I'm a firm believer, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> One more night, busy signal. Girl, another child, just one blind. One more night, give me just one more night. Girl, one more night, cause I can't live without you. One more night, yeah, we give me one more night, girl. A million more nights, cause Alright, cause every day me say me want to know my life Come in now off the wake if you know the day by my side I beg me, I beg you apply, swallow me pride Y'all me world so close with those who want me feeling scared wow. I did. Remember when you say you need me all day Make love from the room to in the hallway girl Me not really want to learn the hard way Me not afraid to say please girl stay Vincent and Patricia Chin started Randy's record mark by selling used records out of their ice cream shop at East and Tower Street in Kingston, Jamaica. In the late 1950s, Vincent Chin worked for Joe Issa, stocking new records in the jukeboxes and accumulating the records he took out. These records were the springboard for what would eventually become the largest reggae record company in the world, VP Records. The info is right here. You play your cards right, get you one of these. All right. But ladies and gentlemen, again, we're having a nice conversation with Miss Pat right now. And trust me, I'm a kid in a candy store. I love, 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 love getting the info. Love getting schooled. Love learning. And like I said, oh, no, 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 show that Miss Pat here. Yeah? So, I, you know, I'm getting an idea. I wonder if we can set up a sound and make it like select. I wonder what the audience, would, what, what kind of crowd I could pull now and say, you're the one behind the, the ones and twos. You want to try it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. It's a, it's a G cool challenge. G cool. I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Now, the, the the business itself, like we always say, it's ever changing. The brick and mortar institutions, to some degree, are fading. Um, you opened, you know, in Florida, you're in New York, uh, Japan, if I'm not mistaken, uh, South Africa, Brazil. The research shows, and of course, Kingston, UK affiliates. 
and stuff like those. Are you still eyeing growth in terms of, you know, or, or, is, or is the digital marketplace reason for concern when it comes to brick and mortar growth? I think the digital age is here, but mm -hmm. there's always room for other things mm -hmm. because I think people used to hear the singer and not see them. Right. So there's a big market for performance now. Mm. A lot of big things can happen mm -hmm. if we're disciplined to really go in that right. direction. Right. If, for example, if you book a event they need to make sure that they come on time they come off the stage when the time to come off the stage <laughs> right 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 they, that's they a problem too they're carrying 20 people with them when it's, it's not going to make any money for nobody right right you have to work right. as a business because if you lose an event you're not going to hire them again yeah so everybody has to get a piece of the, the pie. Right, right. And there's enough for everybody. If we do it right. If we do it right. Mm. But they have to think of the business side too. Right. So they have to learn business, only not being an artist. They have to learn to invest their money properly. Right. And knowing that there's going to time, but maybe they don't make another hit for a couple of months or a couple of years. Or ever. So they have to sustain themselves. Mm -hmm. So they have to invest Right, and right. not to use all the money at one time. Right. To invest. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Again, knowledge, ladies and gentlemen. With, with, with streaming becoming the way or the major and the most popular way of consuming music right now, I, I, I have Apple Music. I have Spotify. Apple Music runs me like nine ninety nine a month. I can't say I use it worth the nine ninety nine, but at the end of the day, truthfully, if I listen to two songs, I've exceeded the nine ninety nine. Mm -hmm. um, I've always wondered... And I'm sure if I'm wondering, you probably considered, but is there the possibility, would you ever consider doing like a VP exclusive, like a streaming service that's that's a VP streaming service, access to the VP catalog in adverse to just the other distribution second. channels? Yeah. I thought about that a lot of times because I always want to be independent mm -hmm. and give more of what we have. Mm -hmm. But it's very hard. Mm -hmm. I, I, I talked about it already. Why don't we have our own streaming platform platform mm -hmm. but it's it's a learning process right. and in time maybe they will consider that mm. in time but, but you never know you never know i like that i think i think it would be really awesome because it just puts the catalog at the fingertips and again i think the market is ever growing and uh and who knows the music better than us nobody trust me especially you, know, you can tailor it in every way you can yeah yeah. We are great in gospel. We are great in every format of music. Mm. So who knows it better than the people who grows with it and it's their culture. Right. And you study it. So I, I think it can work. But I think we need also a partnership with people who knows. But I think also that God has given talents to everybody differently. Mm. So maybe we are good in certain things, right. but we are not good in another thing. Right. So collaboration is a healthy way to go to. A oh, lot right. of big companies are doing it. Yeah. I find that we don't have it all, all, all. Maybe we have this, but we need somebody else who can do this well and somebody else can do that well. So collaboration hmm. and partnership is good. I like that. I like that. Um, we, we also have seen growth in some cases. Again, we go back to evolution of the genre. We're talking about, like you mentioned earlier, Lover's Rock, Mento, Rocksteady, Ska, Bluebeat, Reggae, Dancehall. Ska is almost gone from our repertoire. We see you know, a couple of Ska albums being dropped a year, hundreds of Ska bands out there, not one being a Jamaican band. To me, it's a little bit of an issue. But we don't ever want to ignore evolution. But there's a type of music coming out right now that's it's like a fusion dancehall. It's like we're, 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 we're merging dancehall with hip-hop and to some degree maybe even vacating the dancehall trying to do the hip-hop. When you listen to music and consume music, how do you feel about the fusion music you hear? We call it all kind of different names, you know? What, 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 how do you feel about it? Is it, is it? is it purists that are complaining because they're, they feel like they're missing their art and missing their culture? Or is there room for this fusion music right now coming up? I think it's creativity. 
because you can take old thing and turn it into something new. Mm -hmm. And I find that, you, and, you, and I think it's for the future. Mm -hmm. You will hear a rhythm or you will hear a song. And I was listening to a Bob Marley record the other day. Mm -hmm. It's Bob Marley singing, but it's a different musician playing behind it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's a lot of growth for creativities. Mm -hmm. You know, you could have a beautiful background, but you could have another singer. There's so much cross-pollination with music and singing and the background music. I think it's going to reach that stage. Wow. But, you know, we're original, and I always feel that people imitate us because we're the best. Right, right. We just have to learn to be creative that know what's going on. But you know, because I, I always wonder, and what you said is so important. We're 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 the best at it. We're the originators of it. So that's where they're gonna follow. But I always wonder, then if we give up the original, what do they imitate? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Is it a situation where now it's just a matter of time before there really is no original, because the blueprint now that we have is gonna be the hybrid. So then the generation that's coming up is now all they have to look at is the hybrid. We have to educate our young people in our culture and where we're from and try to let them realize. Because when I went to s certain places, I went to Washington and, and we had a, a stand-up banner with a lot of information about music. And although their grandparents came from Jamaica, the young generation didn't even know that reggae was born in Jamaica. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we still have to educate them on where it comes from. Mm. And that is why the artists that are been singing for 50 years, we want to bring them in back again mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. the young ones know who were these singers right. and how it started and the struggle they went through to create this music. Wow. We have to educate them on that. Gotcha. Gotcha. I, I like the fact that we'll come back to education. And again, I, I love it because so many up-and-comers watch. And I think talent is great, but we can't ignore the fact that that education is necessary. It doesn't necessarily mean formal education. It's just passing and sharing of knowledge. Um, the Grammys and stuff like that, right? Do you pay attention to the Grammys? Yeah, we have to pay attention because it's sad that it's only certain names are of the earth here. Mm -hmm. And um, my, my son, Randy, he did register and, and, a, and a part of, of the selections and so on. Oh, mm -hmm. If we're not in it, we're, then how, how are we going to, right. to be a part of it? We have to be in it to know how to do it. Right. And um, some time ago, we had sent the forms around for people to enroll, but hardly anybody enrolled right. from Jamaica. So we don't, so we don't, we don't enroll, but we complain. Yes, we, we, ha we have to be in it to know it. Yeah. We have to study how, to, how it's done. It's education to know how to. Because Lohan Bear is so much help he has. And has and never. Has, and, he has, and he has never been. Because people don't know. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot more we have to teach and, 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 and tell people how, how precious we are with our music. It's, 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 it's absolutely amazing because... I remember when I talked to the veterans of radio about charts. They've always said, hey, Jiko, would you do a chart? I said, no. But when, we talked, when, when I spoke to them about doing charts back in the day, they said they would compile the data from the charts by contacting VP or so forth, or whomever the record outlets were, because that's how they're going to gather the data based on what's sold and whatnot. And I'd presume that being the champion, the leader in the, in the sphere of reggae music, that somehow, some way, they would you know, refer to you too, but apparently not. No. Last year, I got a lot of music, and I'm listening to a lot of music. Three of the top albums to me that came out for that year were VP releases. One was Alba Rosie's um, Unbreakable. Mm -hmm. um, the other one was the King Jammies Presents Dennis Brown. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then the other one was Never Ending. And amazingly enough, neither of the three. So um, it, it kind of shocks me. That there's no, you know, that nobody resorts to the leaders to find out. Maybe if we speak about it a little bit more. You know, we can get involved all we want. I'm going to register. I'm in the process of registering to be a, a, a voter of the Grammys. But at the end of the day, 
it's a popularity contest. We can't ignore that. And it's the bigger names and the popular names. And, you know, like they said, you get 150 records to listen to. You're not going to listen to 150 albums. You go for the familiar. But I do think that it would be important for them to contact, we'll have, to have VP it. as a resource, so to speak. We talk about Barry Simon just mentioned the, the, the legend. Um, the one album that was Grammy nominated, uh, Music is Life. Brilliant body of work. And then he released Never Ending last year. How, how, talk to me about that album. How do you feel about that album? I think it's a very good album. But as I said, everything takes time. Mm -hmm. We have to take time to learn our digital work. We have to take time when the music changes. We have to take time. So I think we'll get there. Mm -hmm. And when we get there, it will be a floodgate because we have so much great singers right. and so much great music. Right. But it takes time. Mm. You have to be in it to know how it works. Got to be in it. A little bit of patience employed. Right. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, every now and then there's an artist. This is, a, this is, this is you know, you be asking you as a, as, a, as, a, as a lover of the music, lover of the culture. Every now and then there's an artist that you completely get lost in as a fan. For me, that's Marcia Griffith. I get starstruck and fan out every time I see Marcia. It could be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. May I get starstruck the five days then. Is there a particular artist out there that has that effect on you? Many, many artists. <laughs> <laughs> I have, from all the genre, I can f figure out each of them who mm -hmm. I like. I'm a Roots fan, yeah. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I love all the genres, all different music, because there's different times in my life when I could be driving and I hear Sizzler and I just say, oh my God, mm -hmm. Sizzler's playing, thank you, Mama. <laughs> wow. You know, there's certain things that uh, music, it never dies because there's always a time when you appreciate a song because of what you're going through. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very emotional. You know, I, it brings me back when I went to Spain, or I went, yes, to Ratatam, and I hear one of my, my husband's song playing. I said, boy, that record never even hit in Jamaica. Here is it, they're killing it on the radio. Wow. I said, it makes me feel so good. And these are those 18, 20 year old kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They didn't born as yet. Right. Because right, I'm right. in the music over 60 years. And they're appreciating it. And life. they're appreciating it. So music never dies, you know, it just, some type, just comes around. I love it. And I think if, if we do live to, if, if I do live to, 50 years time mm -hmm. the songs that are playing now mm -hmm. it's going to have a different meaning 50 years time right right because like 50 years ago the song some of the songs didn't even hit right and after 50 years you know, know they're they surfacing are. because mm -hmm. it's a time it's a mm -hmm. time for everything time to sleep time to wait time to laugh time to cry yeah there's a timing for everything i love that as profound as, as some of the stuff you say is so profound and i'm looking at the picture of a young patching and and it's still i'm still kind of connected that say a real rebel you know because it don't look because <laughs> you, you, you can't tell by looking here but i can just imagine a sizzler come on the radio up and bow bow it, it just it, it <laughs> that's just what i'm getting right about now i love it i love it i love it vp is the family business yes. right and um we talk business a lot because again you have to. Let's talk family for a little bit. Is, is, is it possible for you guys to get together as a family and, and don't talk no music, don't talk no business? Does that happen? We try. We try not to do, but somehow it, <laughs> <laughs> the music will get in. <laughs> somehow, someway, yes, it shall come up. Because um, my, um, my son has their kids and they're going off to college. So, you know, mm -hmm. he spent a lot of time on the weekend with them. Mm -hmm. But every time, every now and then something is happening. So it draw, draws us right back in the business. I got gotcha. you. Because it's, the business is this all life. And it's fun. <laughs> I, I, told, I told my employees that, you know, I so appreciate you guys because you're here. All you do is go and sleep. We are here from nine till in whatever time. Mm -hmm. It's like they live on, in the business. <laughs> and like we, we live in the business too. We only go home and sleep. Right, right, it's, right. It's our life. <laughs> wow. Cycle continues tomorrow. Yes. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Uh, you, you've also seen so much in your tenured career um, with your husband and, and on your own. What would you say or what would you chalk up to be, I don't want to say your greatest, but one of your greatest accomplishments in this business? 
Well, I would say to see the artists develop. Mm. You know, they come very shy and not sure. Mm -hmm. And when they make the hit and they be, you know, I've seen them from small stages and they grow up to be mm -hmm. big and could go out on the platform and showcase themselves. I feel just amazed to see. Wow. And um, and also, you know, I didn't force my kids in the business, but they just gravitate right, right. to the business. Mm. So I'm hoping that it will continue. Even when I'm not here, it will continue. And I'm amazed also to see the producers and singers that their children is taking on their mm. tradition right. in different ways. Right. Generation two, generation three. Yes. Wow. I like that. Wow. I love that. I love that. It comes right back to family. Can, you know, the business, the family intertwine. And and people might think it's such a big, huge thing, but in the music business, mm -hmm. everybody knows everybody. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a one big family. Wow. Because you know, from growing up sixty years ago, starting the business, you know, all the producers, mm -hmm. all the singers. All the business people. Mm -hmm. It's just like we, we're a big family. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You've seen the past. You are living the present. What do you see, or should I say, hope for, for the future? Not of this music, but of VP Records. I would hope they'll continue. Because it's all culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've always have three things in mind. To develop the artists, the singers, and uh, make good music, mm -hmm. and to give back to our community. Give back, giving back seems to be something that's very important to you. And I know you have your um, your charities, I, I, I think it's Heartbeat of the World. Yes. and Talk to Alpha. me a little bit about that. Alpha, Alpha, you support Alpha? Yes. Let's talk about that a little bit. I have so many charities that it's, it's, it's too much to... <laughs> we have to put them on a strictly the best CD. Yes. <laughs> but but I, I feel like, you know, that it's, it's very good to give back because mm -hmm. I remember when I didn't have it and my dad always said to me, Pat, if you think we are poor, there's always somebody poorer than you. Wow, wow. And if you remember the man with the banana, he's, he's peeling the banana and he's throwing the skin behind him. Mm -hmm. And there is it, another man take up the banana skin and say, oh my God, thank you. I mm. have this banana skin to eat today. Wow. So there's always somebody who needs something. Mm -hmm. So my charities, are, my charities are endless. But this year I'm putting out the Pat and Vincent Foundation, with Vincent and Pat Foundation, mm -hmm. which I hope to generate more money that I can give away more money. Mm. I like that. I like that. And and I, I you know whenever I talk to people about about Pat Chin, they talk about the business of course, but it's always they they always go back to the person, the heart. You know what I mean? That giving, that 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 warmth, and like you said, something you probably learned growing up from your parents too. That giving is important. Very. I, I love that. I love that. I love that. No, you know, like I said, I dug up some questions from Roy too. Um, we, one was about Idler's rest, but we already spoke about that one. And then the other one was about the, the, the charities. But you have a book coming out. Like I oh, mentioned yeah. earlier, you're about to be a best-selling author. We're putting that out there, right? Oprah. <laughs> All right. Talk to me a little bit about the upcoming book. Well, the book will be coming out next year. Mm -hmm. It's about people know the business, but it's a little about me. Mm -hmm. How I was brought up, where I, you know, my parents, and why I choose to be in the music business. Mm -hmm. And my struggles and my success in the 60 odd years since I've been in the music. Mm -hmm. And the people I meet along the way, very important. Right, right. I have quotes from a lot of people who mm -hmm. gave me quotes who knows me over the year. Mm -hmm. I remember Eddie Siago said to me, yeah, I said to him when he came to visit me, that's the prime minister, ex-prime minister. Mm -hmm. So do you remember me, Mr. Seago? He said to me, how could I forget? You're the only woman that ever come down West Indian record and come by one person, like one Jim Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> I come to buy one, one record from him. <laughs> <laughs> 
One. No bulk. No one. One. And when I sell the one, I go buy one more. <laughs> and I go to one arts radio service, I buy one turntable, one needle, one record brush. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is in one. Right, right, right. And when I sell it, I go back and buy one more. <laughs> <laughs> That's business savvy right there. You will not catch me with an overload of inventory. I like it. I like it. I guess the booking's coming out next year. Yes. It's going to be one of those nice for the coffee table kind of a vibe. Yeah, coffee table, a lot of pictures, and um, most important, the people I meet along the way, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, this music business is very interesting, not only the business, but just the people. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. you meet along the way and the struggle they have. And, you know, to see, especially when, when they used to leave their records and, like, they leave 25 records and maybe only five sell. I mm -hmm. could see how disappointed they are, but I have to just have to encourage them. Wow. A lot of them didn't make it, but thank God the cycle is coming around and most of the records that didn't sell during that time, they have a shine on them now. People nice. want the unusual records and the hard-to-get records. Mm -hmm. So we are now seeking out all those people to give them an award or to acknowledge them mm -hmm. and there's quite a few of them wow quite i love that them. now i always when the artists come in i know when your artists come in the building and i talk to your artists and i, I always try to get dates it is what it is i mean so when the when the thing i come out give me a specific date now and can we hold you to that and they always say i'd love to but at the end of the day you know vp you know we have to talk to vp so you are VP, so we can hold you to the book thing for next year thing? Yes, definitely. Okay. Definitely. So we're holding you to it? Yes, of course. I hope it will be a very interesting book to people who wants to know me, not as a business person, but who I am. Wow. I'm sure there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a <laughs> lot of people. And I I can't wait. I'm not even going to lie. I cannot wait to sit down and read that book. It, I, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a good... You know, bring the bring bring the family together by the coffee table. We can drink some, you know what I mean, and read the thing. What's next on VP's release agenda? What's the big? I know you got the the, the Jack Your album just dropped, which um he's on social media saying Grammy. So we'll see how it goes. But what's on the VP agenda coming up next? Well, we have a 40th anniversary book CD vinyl everything is in it it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a beautiful 40 year anniversary of all the songs that we have made over the years and this should be a very good it's a collector's item wow it, mm. it takes about a year to put together wow but it's really releasing um next month i think it's in yes next month and they'll be able to get it online or even go to the stores and, yes, and get it. Yes, it will be available all over. and we are going to have something in jamaica too mm -hmm. Um, Jamaica, Jamaica, it's an exhibition for the museum downtown and it will have the history about us also. Mm. And we just had an exhibition in the Chinese Museum in New York. Right. And which we showcase our journey, right. like a music journey. And you spoke people, of that, right? Yes. People are very fascinated, you know, and, and there's a lot of interview from people who wants to know how we Chinese people get in the business. Mm -hmm. And it goes way back from the shopkeeper. Right, right. Pays mm -hmm. And why the Chinese and the blacks are so intermixed. Mm -hmm. How we are together. Right, right, right. There's no doubt about that. We are intermixed and mixed and mixed and mixed. Right, right. So the music is the one ingredient, I think, that really ties us together. Wow. So you have the... We can sing, but we have to have the business side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, of course, they have a lot quite a few um, Chinese musicians like Baron Lee and mm -hmm. Keith Lin and singers so but we have we have to have the people behind to do the business also yeah because you can't sing how do you collect your royalty how do you yeah how do you sell your goods yeah so there's always have to have that yeah. different types of business that goes with the music right teamwork makes a dream work I'm saying yeah and and funny enough there's a there's a there's a there's a, a strong talented subculture of reggae music in China right now. Oh, yes. Coming out. Yeah. So. I had two interview with me from companies in China wanted to know. Mm -hmm. I guess they saw it on the internet. Mm -hmm. And the internet is so good because you can be here and somebody will call you yeah. from China so they want it. 
Wow. Actually, in in um, Japan, mm -hmm. somebody we have we have office in Japan, mm -hmm. and actually this design is done by a, a Japanese. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, artist. Mm -hmm. it, mm. He took the store, and he put the people and. He's Marisaki. Is a Japanese graphic designer. Actually, when we were in Central Park a month ago, he came down from Japan, mm -hmm. and uh, he did an illustration while in the day. Wow! And was finished in the evening. What was that? Then it's probably a lot of people out there in Central Park. Yes. Right? Wow! 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 We, we, we maximized the area. <laughs> wow! Over five thousand people couldn't hold anymore. So it was a big year. It's a free concert. Mm. This little book that I'm looking at right about now, this stuff is quite interesting. You know, this is a, a nice little keepsake. A nice little... Ninja. And we're going to give away a little... Uh, got something for you, all right? I'm going to give away a little something, all right? You ain't getting my CDs out there, am I? But, uh, <laughs> strictly the best bag and a strictly the best T-shirt. See? We got the T-shirt in the bag, the whole nine. You know? So, we got goodies for you. We got goodies for you. We got goodies for you to keep. It's something, just something to hold you over until the book comes out. Right. All right. We ain't giving that away. But uh, make sure you go ahead and uh, get yourself a copy of the book when it comes out. Pat, let me ask you this. What's your go-to reggae song? What? I cool. No, that's that's a Jack Your shirt. Yes, that's a new Jack Your shirt. <laughs> Don't look like it coming on sexy. You know, my size look like it. No, so I'll get your size for you in the Put on this. I look like a tattoo. You see, <laughs> like a burnt mark. <laughs> and inside the bag is also the reggae trail telling you all about reggae when we came to America first. Wow. And all the record stores that were available. Mm. And their label to honor them, you know. So oh, this is amazing. This Ooh. is a Japanese um, Marasaki. Opens up like building. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, you see the things? Yeah, 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 nice to look at it. Uh, let's get this camera. Uh, you know what? It's all good. I'll, I'll show them. See that thing? Big and beautiful. True reggae fans are going to love this one right here. Yes, it is a big hit. It's nice. It's nice. People love this one, right? Yep. Jack Cure, the album is Reggae Soldier. So... It's an album that I actually haven't even fully listened to yet, but you know, it's getting a lot, a lot of buzz out there in the streets. Boom, boom, boom. Is this suppo supposed to be in there too or no? I think so. Yeah? Yeah. I'm gonna wanna stay in them and I want to tell me rabbit. Because like, you do it all the time. Alright, so we have goodies. We got goodies. Pat came bearing gifts, um, bearing, you know, sharing knowledge and the whole nine with us. So We'll let you know how you can win. Just go in my, you know what? Go in my inbox and just the first two people that type in, patch in, get some. Stipulations. If you're not in the continental US, I don't know. Like Muta said, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know how you're going to get it. But we'll figure something out, all right? But ladies and gentlemen, just go ahead and make sure you're supporting the music. I, I, I sit on here every day and I talk music, I talk culture because this is us. This is what we got. This is what we bring to the table. Make sure you go out there and support the culture. I put these lighters up, burn fire every single day and say, yeah, the thing mad, the thing mad, the thing mad. And we all say we love it, but we have to go out there and support. You know what I mean? In one way, shape or form. If you stream, you're streaming, stream the thing. I'm a person, I believe in that the streams are cute, but the downloads are sexy. Sexy we deal with around here. Pat, what's your go-to reggae song? You have, you have a go-to reggae song? <laughs> you're going to shock me now, because if you tell me about the right about them, I'm about, I'm about to put my lighters up. What's your go-to song right now? I have so many, I can't find, I can't remember them now. What say? Play, play it safe, play it safe, I know. I have, I have so many, so many, so many friends in the music business, singers, artists, producers, DJs. Uh, my, my, my friendship is so huge that I can't <laughs> Don't want to call the name right now. <laughs> Did it do <don't> you? <laughs> so, <laughs> give, give, me, give, me, give me something that people would be surprised to know about Patchen. Surprising. A Chinese woman mm -hmm. doing reggae music because uh, the people who come to interview me, mm -hmm. actually I got the independent award for the first 
independent award for a woman that uh, does uh, congrats yes congrats they when they come to s they're very surprised to see a, a four four foot yes. four foot eleven inches Chinese woman <laughs> with heels on <laughs> <laughs> that's with heels on right <laughs> do it, do it, do it, uh, <laughs> behind reggae music. Wow. They, they're very, <laughs> they're very <laughs> startled. <laughs> it's amazing, though. And you continue to amaze us. And for all the work that you do, I know the people out there that consume the music appreciate it. But I will say, I definitely, definitely, definitely appreciate it. Love the works, love the efforts. No matter what goes on in the world, there's always trickling it down to roots. What's the little engine that's keeping this thing moving? And I know that is you. I know the family's proud of you. I know, you know, the matriarchy keep it going. And I tell Chris Aaron, they say, oh, no, 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 John. You know what I mean? I dig it. <laughs> Drop some words of advice, if you can, for particularly young, aspiring music entrepreneurs, people who want to be the next, not the next big artist, but somebody who wants to be the next Pat Chin or the next Vincent Chin. Some words of advice. Just work hard. Know what you want to do. Never stop and don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. Just do what you do. Do it with a passion. Have a focus and just do it. And just start where you are. Don't wait to be big at first. God didn't make the world in one day. It takes seven days. Wow. We have to work it. Have patience. Know that it is for you. Mm -hmm. You will get it. Have a passion and a goal in what you have in mind. And most of all, don't be afraid to ask questions. Mm. A lot of good people out there will give you advice. Wow. And circulate your, your friends with positive people. Mm -hmm. Anybody's going to put you down. You don't need that. You don't need that. Mm. Just circle yourself with good people, positive people. Love and that. don't let them tell you that you can't do it. Yes, you can do it. Just keep pushing, work hard, have a goal, and focus. Love that. Couldn't close out any better way, ladies and gentlemen. And, um, you know, when it's all said and done, it's a grueling business. It's trying. It is what it is, as is anything else. But it is a grueling business. Um, if you decided to hang it up tomorrow and go do triathlons or whatever, you know, go, go, whatever, what do you want your legacy to be? Your legacy, not, not, not VP, but Pat's legacy. Well, I would say that, that I'm a good mother mm -hmm. and a good person. Mm -hmm. And I make a difference in somebody's life, if it's even one person. Wow. I love that. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Pat Chin. All right. We talk about VP all the time. So we, we, we just took the blinds up. We opened the window and we showed you what's popping. We show you what's up. Enjoyed it very, very very, very much. We started with, 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 with the legend himself, Mr. Barris Hammond. Probably think we should give him another Barris. Okay, and I just want to congratulate G. Cole okay. and all the DJs out there, all the fans, all my customers, all the producers, all the singers, nameless, mm. for your contribution to a great, great music. Thank you. We're being loved all over the world. We have a great, great our music, our food, our sports. Mm -hmm. We're a God-blessed country, so wow. keep going on. I love that. Tiny country in the Western Hemisphere, West Indies, Jamaica, <laughs> and we're doing it. <laughs> music. Okay. I hope you can. I hope I can. Barris Hammond, she loves me now. Talking about Barris Hammond selects VP Records 40th anniversary. Go to Apple Music, go to iTunes, wherever. You can get it. The legend. And there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. It has indeed been a pleasure. Please be sure to subscribe to the podcast, Homegrown with G. Cole, available now on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Radio.com, and all your podcast platforms. Remember also, please check out the website, homegrownwithgcole.com, to watch and for all things homegrown. The video of this interview is available on YouTube. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And for all those people listening on Apple Pod. 
please give us a review. A five star would be great. We'd so, 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 so appreciate it. All right. Remember, be safe, be kind, and be good to each other. My name is G. Cole, and this is Homegrown. Nakikinika Sa Musica, Homegrown with G. Cole. Estás escuchando Homegrown con G. Cole. Nin Sienza Jungsa Shouting Da Shi, Homegrown with G. Cole. You're listening to Homegrown with G. Cole. Remember all the music played here on the podcast, Homegrown with G. Cole, is available on iTunes, Spotify, and all your digital retailers. Please support the artists.